behind the scenes at a daily show with John Stewart and John Oliver. MBA Ethics Oath. From Madoff to Stanford to AIG, Wall Street has become rife with corruption and greed. This is my time on The Daily Show, which was pretty cool. I was on The Daily Show two times, but I'll tell you what exactly happened. The Daily, Daily Show sees me on some TV shows. So, meaning like news shows, and they go, wow, this guy's pretty good. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. There's something called, and I'm going to show your audience, it's called suitcasing something. It's actually hiding something in your rectum. And especially in prisons. So the first clip they sent me with, they sent me to Montana. Listen, I'll never forget this. They sent me to Montana. I meet the crew, m m meet a guy named Stu Miller. Good guy, he's a producer on The Daily Show. Uh, and Tim Greenberg, two of the producers. Wow, good memory. I still remember their names. And I go on the show. They they actually, I don't know how they hired it or they rented it. It was a prison that was built, but nobody ever came to it. Don't ask. They built the prison. They thought they were going to get contracts with the feds or the state. They never did. And it was an actual prison. And it was crazy. So we go do this clip. They fly me there, they do everything. I'm doing this clip with The Daily Show and I'm having a ball with these guys. Now you gotta remember, this is about 2009. And in 2009, I was in crazy shape. A matter of fact, on the video, I'm doing handstand presses. Upside down on my hands, presses. And they're thinking I'm crazy. This guy's fucking lunatic is what they're saying. But they loved me so much. Let me tell you what happened. They actually were trying out a new host, not a host, like a new skit guy. And I, apparently he doesn't work out. But Jon Stewart saw the clip with me and said, man, you got to get this guy with John Oliver. Have you ever had a student in your class where you've thought he is going to do some serious jail time? But it's not all bad news. A group of Harvard MBA students recently circulated an ethics oath to business schools across the country. With such controversial vows as, I will act with utmost integrity and pursue my work in an ethical manner. It was clear something had to be done. I sat down with the most vulnerable members of our society. Harvard and MIT MBA students who refused to sign the oath. Now that's all legit. These students wouldn't sign this ethics oath. So my gig was they, they come and I was going to come in and, and, and yell at them and tell them why you're not going to sign stuff like that. Now, what little do I know is I come up in a shirt like this, normal shirt, but they end up putting my red shirt on me. They loved my red shirt. So I ended up putting the red shirt on and but what they did do is they built a suit a whole suit you know the suit and the tie and a whole works jacket and it's all put together sewn together and it's got a breakaway back i invited a guest speaker professor lawrence lawton aka larry whose curriculum vitae includes 11 straight years in a federal penitentiary why don't you want to sign the oath i think we trust our integrity and our education I don't think anyone here plans to go to prison. Do you think Bernie Madoff planned to go to prison? I'm telling you one thing I learned about The Daily Show. Great people. Great people. They had fun. They're in the back. Now, I'm in the back where all the, the hosts are, the, the writers, all that kind of stuff. And they got mega staff, probably 100 people working for The Daily Show. It's funny. that they're, they're really a kickback crew. And I understood a lot right then and there about TV industry. You got to make it fun. You got to have uh, different things to do. So I'm back there. We're going through the skit. We're going to do what we're going to do and all that kind of stuff. Now, these six Harvard and MIT students, there was two women and four guys, I think it was, you'll see the skit, and they wouldn't sign an ethics oath. That's all legit. All of this is legit. So I am to come out and I, I, as you see in the clip, I ended up walking out. I ripped the suit off and they called me Professor Larry Lawton. And I come and I sit down and here's, here's the funny part. Now we're going through some questions and they, they don't know who I am really. So they don't know that, I mean, I know what's going on. They think I'm just somebody coming in to tell them and a lecture them. Well, if you watch the clip closely, 
on this part right here, he goes back and forth. I yell at them a little bit. I do a few things and they don't know if I'm legit or not. Like meaning how, how crazy I am or not. Being ethical is not something that you learn from signing a piece of paper. You know, I'm gonna tell you something I learned in prison. You got seven extra inches in your anal canal to hide some. Let me ask you, you think you know what prison's all about? You better go to the shower with your boots on. You if you do. don't, you don't go with your friends, they're gonna shank come and shank you. your ass. You like that? That's what's gonna really get shanked gonna... in the shower? You Shut like up, that? Ms. Doubtfire. Yeah, okay. Well, they did a take, you know, they stopped the cameras and they're talking to each other and I lean over to John Oliver and the producer, and I say, you know, fuck these fucking rich kids, man. I might just snap and go back to prison and break one of their necks. I think MIT has prepared me for a broad range. You, MIT prepared you for fucking prison? I stabbed two Let's, people. I've been stabbed. Time shut time shut, time shut time the fuck up. Can, we Can you do it? No, we can't. <laughs> shut up, Susan Boyle. Sign the fucking paper. We want to earn your trust by our actions, not because we signed a piece of paper. By the time you said that, I'd have killed you, him, all these Cameraman in this fing British. Hey, shut the f up. I'm doing it. And these guys are going, I go, yeah, fuck these rich people, man. They don't want to sign an act. I might snap and break their fucking neck. Now, the producers are like, Larry, slow down, you know, don't worry, don't slow down. Now, these six guys that are on the panel, the Harvard and MIT students, getting their MBAs, they're listening to this, they're overhearing this. Now they don't know what to think. I, I go back and forth. I tell them about prison. I tell them about a few things. You don't see certain of it. You see me cursing out John Oliver, calling him Susan Boyle, uh, calling him a British fuck, all this kind of crazy shit. And all of a sudden they come to question. John Oliver goes, Surely Larry's message was reaching them. So Larry's been uh, sharing a lot today. Uh, have any of his words convinced you to sign? We really appreciate what Larry's been saying, but I think everything he said doesn't really address the issues that are with the oath. Right, so what you're saying is Larry is an idiot. Definitely not. I'm not saying that. He's got a great message about not wanting to go to prison, but oh. there's a link missing. So, so now she's patronizing you, Larry. Their faces dropped, because I'm looking at them. And they go, no, no, no. Like, you know, and I'm kind of inside laughing, thinking, you, you know, it's kind of funny when you think about it, when you look at the clip. Now that you know the inside joke, when these guys said, no, we're not calling Larry Nitt, they were fucking scared that I was going to get up and fucking snap one of their necks. I decided to give them some alone time. You got to talk to me when you come to prison because you're going to be my bitch. Remember that. You might be a girl, but I'll Just an hour with Larry is all it would take to prevent five future Madoffs. I went back to check on their progress. This equation describes how you take the risk and you spread it around amongst your investors. You guys are geniuses. Whoa, 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 Larry, what is this? This is insurance. What? We'll make a fortune. It's basically an anal chastity default swap. He ended up running for lieutenant governor of the state of Connecticut. I think he was a councilman or a representative of the state of California eventually. And he was still in college at this time. So he was really a smart guy and we ended up talking in the hotel and he goes, oh, you're a good guy, you know, that kind of stuff. And it was really funny because now in the skit, they're like, you know, Larry, come on, you're gonna, you know, these, these people don't know what's going on, you know? And I'm saying, fuck this, I'll fucking kill one of these motherfuckers. They don't want to sign an net to go, whatever. And it was kind of funny. So you're basically securitizing the risk and then spreading it out. So you give a piece to the Nortenos, a piece to the Dirty White Boys, a piece of Cell Block C, and so on. Larry, you're not buying this shit. What are you kidding me? We're gonna be rich. By the way, shut the camera off. No, do not shut that camera shut, off. Shut the off. Shut that camera off. <laughs> I mean, The Daily Show treated me, let me tell you how well The Daily Show treated me. You know, there's certain shows on TV that treated you very well. The Daily Show was one of them. Also, The Huckabee Show with Fox News. Very good show to go on. They put you up first class. They, you know, get the limo from the airport and they take you up and the guy's holding the sign, all that kind of stuff. You know, some of them are bone, you know, I call them uh, bare bones networks where they won't give you shit, won't pay you for a, a drink or whatever it is. You know, but most of them, most of them are pretty good. Uh, uh, good, good story. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, thank you. 
Are, are, are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> the experience seems to have affected you in a... Uh... Listen, you little Harry Potter looking So anyway, I ended up coming back again to do The Daily Show, and I ended up doing it with Samantha B. She has a show now on, I don't know, A&E or one of the shows or... Uh, I don't know what channel, to be honest, but she has a show, it's called, I don't know what it says, it's a good show, but she's funny too, so I end up doing, we end up doing a show uh, with the uh, Daily Show, and it's called The A-Team, so they brought back guys like me, they brought back another criminal, they brought back, we were supposed to investigate a robbery of one of their guys, who actually, he's well known, his office got robbed for guns. So we're here to come get them. Dun, 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 a team, you know, and I come running out of the van, and the next guy comes running out of the van. Well, here's a funny thing. They had a guy named Frank Luntz on. Well, Frank Luntz was an asshole, and in the van, I said, man, listen to me. You have a fucking talk to me like that, I'll beat your fucking ass. He looked at me like, this guy's fucking crazy. And, and uh, you know, I don't like when people don't treat people top line the best. Listen, when you get on the Daily Show, they gave you like an intern or whatever was with them. And I said to the intern, just take some pictures. So I took pictures of the whole scene and, and what we're doing on the streets in New York. And you do take after take after take. And it's normal stuff in this kind of stuff. That's just the way it is. In the Daily Show, they rented a van. We had to keep going around the block, jump out of the van like they did on the A-Team. You guys might not remember the A-Team. Most of you don't. But if you look it up, it was with uh, uh, Mr. T. And they had uh, also a couple other actors on. It was a pretty good show. I didn't like it. It was They had the van, and they'd come, and they'd solve crimes and do the bullshit they do on these shows. But it was pretty cool. I actually liked it. So the actual behind the scenes of The Daily Show was how they treated you as, for a, as either a guest. And, and here's another thing I got to do. I got to bring my family and friends back to The Daily Show because I got to know the producers. You know, you get to know the producers, you say, hey, listen, I want a couple of tickets to The Daily Show, and they get you the tickets to The Daily Show. And I used to go in the back, back in the green room, and I brought my friends, and I brought my sisters, uh, no, just my friends at that trip. And we went to the back of The Daily Show, and we were meeting people and sitting in there and then the producers come down and all that kind of stuff. John Stewart says hello, all that kind of stuff. And it's really cool. And I enjoyed it a lot because it's just the way they treated you. You know, the, I always say, like, I did a lot of TV. I did a lot of TV with Fox News in Orlando and CBS and ABC, World News, CNN, MSNBC, all the networks, Fox. The networks that treated you the best was Fox News treated you very well and Fox TV show with the Huckabee and the Daily Show. Those are like top of the line the way they treat you. And you know, think about that. Listen, I wasn't getting paid. All you got was recognition. All you got was FaceTime. Where can you put your face in front of a million people? I mean, you just can't do that. Now on YouTube, we can do that hopefully soon. Uh, because we're going to have a million subscribers and thanks to you guys right out there. So it, it's kind of weird looking at the back scenes of The Daily Show and seeing how well they treated me. What I really should do is contact them and see if they'll end up either selling me or giving me that breakaway suit. Oh, the way they made that suit and I rip it off like Superman. Jon Stewart ended up retiring and you know when I look back at The Daily Show and the behind the scenes of The Daily Show, I had so much fun. They're one of the first major networks to bring me out on the road, to show me how it's done, to show me how it works. So I got to give The Daily Show, Tim Greenberg, Stu Miller, obviously Jon Stewart, John Oliver, a lot of kudos for what they did to help me uh, get my face out there in front of people. And they didn't do it just for me. Don't get me wrong. They did it for themselves. They knew they had a good skit. They knew they were gonna get tons of views. In fact, I think we got 300,000 views in a week from the internet. And even back then, this is 2009, internet wasn't what it is today. You know, TikTok, Instagram, all that kind of stuff, it wasn't what it was. And I also wanna thank all you people out there. 
every one of you guys who are pushing us to a million subscribers in a year. I don't know many YouTubers who get a million subscribers in one year. That's a pretty lofty goal. And I want to thank all you guys. All you guys are going to be, and believe me, a lot of you guys are going to be featured in our million uh, subscriber, uh, million subscriber video and live show I'm going to do for the million subscribers. It's going to be fun. I got something really cool planned. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I want to thank you guys again. You guys are the best. There's no question. Uh, I love this stuff. I love YouTube. I love connecting with people. I like Discord. I like everything I'm doing. When I don't like it, you'll notice it. But I like it. I really do. And I want to thank you guys for all the support. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong. Please make good choices. Don't end up like I did. Have a great day, everybody.